So continuing common cause factor, uh, the beta factor. So common cause failures result from a single cause and effect. And um, an effect affect more than one channel. So what are those uh, common causes? What they could be? Uh, so they could be systematic design failures. So now uh, people have to design their equipment uh, to be handled by um, people and the, uh, ha should not be complex, right? If it is too complex, well, the probabilities that you are not going to be able to work with it very well is are, are high. So it has to be simple and has to be straightforward. So um, the complexity of those products or with the new technology that is coming out all the time, sometimes we overlook that not everybody ha are, are at the same level of knowledge with respect to the new technology and it takes a little bit of time there. So the new IEC 61508 uh, released in April uh, 2010 um, uh, it reflects now that in order for equipment to have a SIL rating of 3, for example, SIL rating 3, they have to show that the equipment it is simple to be used, it is not that complex. Uh, and um, according to that um, uh, grading, you or according to that constraint of uh, making the equipment simple or not that complex, uh, it will also be reflected on whether you can achieve SIL 3s or SIL 2s uh, or 1s. Another common cause could be uh, because of human errors. Um, human errors during the maintenance, uh, during the repairs, during the installation of the equipment, right? And also part of the design of the equipment it is uh, to think about that installation correctly. So um, that is a commonality if you have a piece of equipment. Uh, so most probably the human is the common cause right when it is installed in or dealing with it another uh, cause that is common to both channels or common to both uh, pieces of equipment is that it doesn't exist any separation between them right um, for example when you put them both of them um, uh, in the same place and both of them are going to be uh, affected by the um, stresses, right? So temperature, pressure, um, depending on the um, type of environment that you have them. As you try to have them in a, a little bit different environmental conditions for each of those, right? Uh, and you um, you can achieve that by separate them, uh, by separating the the two pieces of equipment. Another common cause would be external stresses, uh, such uh, such as uh, temperature, moisture, uh, corrosion. Um, so the environment, environment and uh, climate. So those are uh, some causes. So what are the factors that affect the beta factor or the common causes? Well, as we can saw before, separation, segregation. So don't try to put them together, try to separate them. That will help affecting um, that the commonality is not affected uh, to both of the equipment. Also to have redundancy or to have diversity. Diversity from the point of view of um, even technologies, right? Or manufacturers. So if you have two valves or two transmitters, if you have two identical transmitters coming from the same vendor then they're going to be affected um, on the same way by the environmental conditions for example however if you have uh, one transmitter coming from one vendor and one an and another one from a different vendor they might be less susceptible to the same common uh, factors in there so um, it, it is good to be diverse also uh, as we saw before complexity in the design complexity and the application, uh, how you install the equipment, maturity, experience in using that equipment, all that affects, that is a common uh, part in there. So um, assessment, analysis uh, and feedback of data, procedures, uh, human interfaces, human interface has to be intuitive or um, 
very well thought. Sometimes you have to be trained and competent. Um, you have to have uh, you have to behave correctly with respect to the equipment and put your best um, intentions forward to try to make it uh, work correctly. There are environmental conditions, environmental testing. It is very important al also to pay attention to this uh, testing. Uh, uh, how do you do your, your test? How do you program your test? Are you going to be doing the test uh, on the field? Or are you going to be able to take that equipment and put it into uh, a lab and work better there and find all that you can uh, or, or test all your equipment all that you can? So all those things are very important to pay attention. Now we're going to go through the tables in uh, Annex D of IC61508-6, Part 6. And these tables are going to talk about all these factors and how we come um, and derive a specific uh, beta factor. So, so there's a relative importance of each factor that we talked about before, the separation, segregation, diversity, complexity, procedures and human interfaces and so on. So there's a, a weighting uh, system, a weighting system that is applied asking those questions. So it, it is very qualitative and it is very, um, uh, you have to give your best engineering judgment according to those situations and try, try to answer the questions, right? And there's a, a weighting, sy weighting system, so you give some uh, marks or grades. So there's total X weight for sensors and actuators. There's a percentage of that total uh, for X. And then there's al also total Y weight for sensors and actuators. And the same thing will be for the logic solvers. And so we have a category X and a category Y. And these categories uh, are with respect to this um, environmental testing, control testing, and how you uh, achieve that. So let's see what um, that means. There's a note in the IC61508 that talks about uh, what is the difference between X and Y. So the note number two, so values in the X and Y columns are based on engineering judgment, as we discussed before. This. So you have you are answering questions is very qualitative. And take um, this <coughs> columns X and Y take into account the indirect as well as the direct effects of um, item uh, of the items in column one that we show before all these factors, all these beta factors. For example, the use of field replaceable modules leads to repairs being carried out by the manufacturer under control conditions instead of possibly incorrectly repairs being made under less appropriate conditions in the field. So um, this leads to a contribution in the Y column because the potential for systematic and hence common cause failures. <coughs> so we can reduce that uh, by having um, column Y. So for ex uh, the use of field replaceable modules leads to a reduction in the need for on-site manual interaction. So column wide had to do with uh, being able to carry out the manufacturers under control conditions. And now the reduction in the need for on-site manual interaction and the ability to quickly uh, repair faulty modules that, that will be reflected in column X. So those two different situations have to be um, separately. And for each of those situations, you will get different uh, marks or different evaluations. <coughs> so sometimes uh, column X will be more strongly reflected by the fact uh, that um, diagnostic was carried out, for example, on site or that the test was carried out on the manufacturer's office. So it means that you plan ahead and you were able to take that equipment and say, no, the way that we test this equipment is with dismantle or not, not dismantle. We, uh, we take it out of, uh, we uninstall it from the 
equipment from site and we send it to the manufacturer for control so that that would be a, a um, you will be get a better grade with respect to handling the equipment in, in that way with respect to common causes applying to that piece of equipment right so how do we determine these common causes so what are the steps that you usually take in order to determine common cause uh, factors and at the end what does that mean right, so um, we use table D1 in IC 61508 uh, part 6 annex D and we use table D2 for logic solvers right so <coughs> and for each logic solver and final elements there is a Y component and X component so in using table D1 in IC 61508 uh, annex D there is um, an S value there that is calculated by adding the X plus Y so X divided by Y ratio shows the extent that diagnosing testing improve the common cause factor and SD is with respect to diagnostic so detectable failures only it plays the same role as we discussed before about um, diagnostic so we can have diagnostic coverage for common causes and that are also we have to determine then for this uh, diagnostic coverage the C factor so using DC diagnostic coverage for uh, and frequency so the more often that you do this um, uh, checking for uh, certain uh, dangerous uh, common causes uh, failures right so you might get a factor so the more often you test that C factor is gonna be uh, better or improve your system and then you go to using the table D1 uh, there's a, a scoring program of electronics for sensors and finite elements We'll show that table a little bit to see how that goes. <coughs> so you have failure rates dangerous detected. So here's a definition for that, and we already went through that. And this is also in the uh, this is copied from the IC61508. So failure rate dangerous detected is the probability of a detected failure for a single channel. So the probability of failures of a single channel that lie within the coverage of the diagnostic coverage test. Here is if the repetition uh, rate of the diagnostic test is high, so you do this test uh, often or frequently, uh, a fraction of the failures are revealed leading to a reduction in the value of beta. And it is represented then by beta D. So beta D is the common cause failure factor for detectable failure uh, dangerous faults <coughs> so and there's a table that is going to be shown that you're going to see how there's will be a percentage applied to that beta D so beta is obtained from table D4 using the score of this formula S equals X plus 1 and beta D is obtained uh, again from table D4 it's the same table uh, but applying um, um, the diagnostic using the Z uh, factor there for the frequency. So X times C plus 1 plus Y. So the X part will be affected by the diagnostic coverage of common causes. So here's an example from table D1 and the scoring, uh, for example, of programmable electronics or sensors and final elements so you have here the logic uh, subsystems X for logic solvers Y for logic solvers sensors and final elements X sen uh <coughs> final sensors final sensors <coughs> Y final uh, sensors so all the factors that we talked about before separation segregation diversity and redundancy and there are some questions we answer those questions and we give some weight to those questions right so this is the engineering evaluation part and so answering all those questions with respect to factors that affect common causes diversity redundancy separation segregation and so on that w the way we saw before so here are the the tables d2 and d3 from IC 61508 
one is for logic solvers and the other one is for sensors and valves uh, uh, for example final elements so here's where you calculate the C value right so remember S equals X times Z plus 1 right plus Y and so for example if you see there for uh, sensors or final elements if you're testing your system less than two hours that means that diagnostic coverage is greater than um, 99 greater than equal 99 percent then you give a score of two your uh, your beta <coughs> d will be two right and so on so you do that table <coughs> then table d4 applies for beta or beta d beta di with diagnostics so the corresponding values for beta or beta d for the logic subsystems and for the sensors or final elements right so when you finalize that scoring and you have um, a grade or a final score less than 45 for sensors and final elements you will have beta will be equivalent to a 10 percent 10 percent of the probability of failure on demand has to be added because you're uh, combining two pieces of equipment so the common causes that affect two pieces of equipment or two channels or more than two channels it could be a two out of three or could be a two out of four uh, so it is always one um, sum you have to add one uh, common cause factor and that would be the beta factor with respect to the worst probability of failure in the amount of the amount of equipment that you have um, of the elements that you have so worst case scenario for sensors you will add a 10 percent of the worst PFD to your combination of probabilities of failures on demand of your architecture so we will work a little bit this is an example and this example shows you at the end what is your score right s for beta and what you score s with diagnostic for beta diagnostics so you have your totals for x and y and your z so now we're gonna um, in in the case of beta factors um, most of the time um, you start with the worst right so 10 percent or five percent for logic solvers if you're working on that and then you will try to see the need to go further and, f uh, and uh, um, put more um, work on, on getting that uh, fine-tuned beta factor just in case right so you see you apply it right away the worst case scenario which is 10 percent and then you see how does that affect your comp your architecture probability of failure on demand of the total architecture so if you think that you're going to improve the probability of failure on demand by going and asking those questions more precisely so going from 10 percent maybe to five percent um, influence from from the common cost factor beta <coughs>